So now uh, it's my uh, it's my pleasure to welcome and introduce uh, Anna Liesner from uh, Biotools, and uh, we can start. So please, Anna, take the floor, and we can we can start it. Great. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. I will share my screen right now with you. You should be able to see it now. Please give me a sign that you see it. Yes. OK, great. Thank you. So thank you again um, for your introduction. Um, uh, yeah, I will give you a short overview and summary of who Cytos Biotech is and what we offer as products and services. I'm Anna Liesner. I am heading the sales, sales and uh, marketing department at Cytos Biotech. Um, and yeah, let's just dig into it. Yeah. So let's start here with our products and services and who we are. So Cytos Biotech was founded in 2013 as a spin out of the University of uh, Regensburg and in Tana Bioscience. Um, and it was basically founded because my superior, my, my boss, the founder, Michael Hannes, um, uh, discovered a very intriguing fact about sRNAs. Uh, I will go into detail about this in the next slide, but it basically uh, means that when you pull sRNAs into a high complexity pool, um, you get much better results and um, more reliable results in your RNAi screening data. Um, and this highly complex uh, oligonucleotide pools um, are common in all our products, so not our, not just our sRNA pools uh, that are um, a pool of 30 sRNAs is a high complexity pool, but also our Rebo pools that are used for ribosomal RNA depletion is a pool of uh, DNA um, oligos that are biotinylated, and of course our Ra pools that are used for RNA pull down. Um, they are also a pool of um, biotinylated DNA oligos. And we also offer services all around our uh, products. For example, um, the big data analysis suit uh, called PhenoVault is a suit that um, helps you understand your RNAi and CRISPR data. Um, we also offer RNA screening and expression analysis um, services. So if you want us to do a screen for you, an RNAi screen, we're happy to do so. And we also offer services around our rebel pools, um, all around NGS. Um, so we also do the ribosomal RNA depletion for you, but we also uh, can do the whole RNA sequencing experiment if, um, if you want. And here on this slide, I wanted to give you a overview of what I mean by high complexity pools. Um, so here on the left hand side, you can see a single sRNA um, that, that is represented here by uh, the double stranded um, strand. And this sRNA was designed for this target that is shown here in green. And the knockdown of it is well good. So um, that's a good thing. However, when using single sRNAs in high concentrations, these sRNAs that are bound by argonaut, they also recognize other targets that are not supposed to be targeted by the sRNA. Um, but like I said, it's the high concentration that results in these uh, off-target effects, they're called. And this is also a great drawback of RNAi. And people have known this for um, a decade now that there is an off-target effect when you use high concentrations of sRNAs. And this usually leads to uh, very unreliable RNAi as, um, data that you have to validate with different sRNAs, et cetera, et cetera. So what we have seen when you pull a, um, if you if you pull sRNAs, in particular 30 sRNAs into a pool that all are targeting the same gene, but at different uh, parts of the gene, um, you actually will see that you need lower concentrations of the sRNA um, for achieving the same knockdown that you needed um, with a high concentration of sRNA, a single sRNA, right? So the so the um, target um, is 
optimally covered by all of these 30 sRNAs. And since the concentration of all of these uh, sRNAs is low, uh, this won't result into a off-target effect. Um, and this actually, all of this um, results in um, not just higher target specificity, but also increased efficiency and reproducibility. And this pooling approach, like pooling several uh, oligos targeting the same gene or transcript this we use also uh, for our other tools, um, so not just the Psi pools, the sRNA pools, uh, but also the RA, RA pools and also the Rebel pools. And the Rebel pools actually are the first um, are the first product that I wanted to show to you. And Rebel pools, as I said before, are used for ribosomal RNA depletion in any species. And um, I just wanted to remind you of why people or scientists do ribosomal RNA depletion because it's when you just sequence a total RNA, like just a total total RNA isolate, you will see that most of the reads, like 80 to 90 percent of the reads will map to ribosomal RNAs and only uh, 20 to 10 percent of the reads are actually those that you need for your subsequent data analysis, like mRNAs, like messenger RNAs or other non-coding RNAs um, that are relevant to your um, to your analysis. So, and since um, it would be really expensive to sequence really deep, um, we created the rebel pools so you can remove the ribosomal RNAs, the abundant ribosomal RNAs, before doing the RNA sequencing to save money on the sequencing step itself. And this is the workflow that um, is used with the rebel pools. It's enzyme free, so it's really, uh, that's really nice. And this is the workflow. So let's start here in the upper left corner. You have um, isolated RNA um, and it consumes of um, the ribosomal RNAs, mRNAs and other non-coding RNAs. And um, you all, all you want to do is sequence these black um, sequences, which are the mRNAs and non-coding RNAs. Um, other than the ribosomal RNAs and we design the rebel pools so that they're antisense to the ribosomal RNA and uh, the DNA oligos that are antisense to ribosomal RNA are also biotinylated. So after including the rebel pools into your isolate um, of RNA, the uh, rebel pools were hybridized to the ribosomal RNAs. And since they're biotinylated, you can include streptavidin coated in magnetic beads. And since biotin binds very strongly to streptavidin, um, you can just pull out um, after using a um, magnetic rack, you can just um, pipe it out uh, the purified RNA um, that is mostly um, only mRNAs and other non-coding RNAs other than ribosomal RNAs. Um, so, and you can just uh, use it then for your uh, library preparation and then subsequent RNA sequencing. And all of this um, workflow takes around 70 minutes, depending on what purification step you choose. Um, yeah, so it's really easy. It takes uh, around 70 minutes and it's automatable. So that's really great. And here I wanted to show you um, what kind of rebel pools we currently have in our portfolio. And we differentiate between multiple species rebel pools and single species rebel pools. And at this slide, I first wanted to show you the multiple species rebel pools that we have that are for one, the pan rebel pools and also the combination rebel pools. And the combination rebel pools are actually um, just the rebel pools that you can combine if you, for example, have um, human tissue that is infected with bacteria, you can um, co-deplete the human ribosomal RNAs and the prokaryotic, like the bacterial um, ribosomal RNAs in just one step without doing anything else. So that's really great news. So um, let's look at the pan rebel pools for eukaryotes. We, for example, have the pan mammal rebel pool with which you can um, deplete ribosomal RNAs from human um, derived RNA or a mouse or rat or horse or dog RNA, um, you know, all the mammals. Um, we also offer the pan fungi rebel pool, for example, um, which is used by the fungi community who work with, for example, as uh, cerevisiae or as pombe or other fungal uh, species. 
Moreover, we also have uh, for the eukaryotes the pan plant, which is a great tool uh, to deplete ribosomal RNAs in all flowering plants. And for prokaryotes, we, for example, have our customer's favorite, which is the pan prokaryote rubber pool. And the pan prokaryote rubber pool is a rubber pool that depletes not just bacterial, but also archaeal rubber pool and um, ribosomal RNAs. And we also offer these as, um, as um, like, as um, single ones, for example, if you only work with pan uh, with bacteria, you can use the pan bacteria rubber pool, and if you only work with archaea, you can use the pan archaea rubber pool. And yeah, like I said, the pan bacteria and pan archaea actually is um, what the is the combination is it results in the pan prokaryote rubber pool. And here is the first data that I wanted to show you that we did using the pan uh, archaea rubber pool. This is a bio bioanalyzer run where uh, we first ran the total RNA from Haloferax vulcani, a archaeal species. Um, and as you can see, these huge uh, peaks are the ones for the uh, small subunit and large subunit of the ribosomal RNA. And after depleting it with the pan archaea rubber pool, uh, you see that the huge peaks are gone and also the smaller uh, ribosomal RNAs, uh, the 5S RNA is, is gone. And we sequenced these samples and we saw that there's only 3% uh, of ribosomal RNAs left. Uh, so the remaining 97% of reads you could use for your subsequent data analysis. And here I wanted to show you what single species rebel pools we have. So obviously we have, um, for example, the human rebel pool, which is a well-studied uh, um, organism and also like mouse and, uh, mouse and rat rebel pools. But we also have uh, rebel pools against so not so well studied uh, species like Chlamyd Chlamydomonas reinhardi. This is a very primitive algae. And uh, or example here, uh, Aedes albopictus. Um, so we're capable of not just creating a rubble pool, a RNA depletion tool for the most studied species, but also for a very unique species um, and not well studied species. And here on the right hand side, you can see our single species rubber pools for the prokaryotes. And for example, we have here Escherichia coli or Haloferax vulcani. And as we've seen um, throughout um, the few years that we uh, offer the rubber pools, we've seen that a lot of customers of ours also work with strongly degraded RNA. For example, derived from FFPE samples, which are formerly fixed or form aldehyde fixed paraffin embedded tissue uh, samples. And as you can see here in the bioanalyzer run, um, FFPE sample RNA is actually, it's really, really strongly degraded. It's around 100 nucleotides only. Um, so this is really hard to, um, yeah, remove the ribosomal RNAs as they're really short compared to those uh, of intact RNA or just slightly degraded RNA. So for these samples, we um, generated um, yeah, rebel pools, for example, the, for human or for human mouse rat or only mouse rat, and also for Drosophila melanogaster for degraded RNA. And here in the middle, we um, I wanted to show you what we have currently in our portfolio for ribosome profiling. As you might know, ribosome profiling is a quite yeah, complex and multi-step um, experiment where the scientists are interested in only basically those RNAs that are actively translated in the cell, meaning those sequences that are protected by the ribosomes. And these ribosome protected fragments are only 30 nucleotides long. And to know which of these 30 mers are inside the um, inside the samples after doing ribosome profiling. We have asked our customers who do ribosome profiling um, to show us the contaminants, the ribosomal RNA contaminants, and we've seen that some some parts of the ribosomal RNAs is actually really extremely abundant, and some are just um, just a few reads of ribosomal RNAs. So we created a tool that evenly and efficiently depletes the ribosomal RNAs, even from ribosome profiling samples. And for ribosome profiling, we currently have for human um, and mouse and rat um, uh, samples, the, the, the 
a rebel pool to deplete the ribosomal RNAs. And also for CE ligands, we created a rebel seek uh, rebel pool. And as some of our customers also work with blood RNA or derived from blood, uh, we also offer a human globin mRNA rebel pool that you can combine with a human rebel pool and enable a even depletion of both the human ribosomal RNAs and also the human globin mRNAs. And as some of you might be working with uh, SARS-CoV-2 infected tissue, um, one could also combine the SARS-CoV-2 RNA depletion tool uh, with a human um, rebel pool to deplete both the human ribosomal RNAs and the SARS-CoV-2 uh, mRNAs. And if any, if you work with a, a species that was not, not listed in uh, our portfolio, we're happy to design a custom rebel pool for you. Um, and we, all we need for this is basically the ribosomal RNA sequences, or if you work with um, tissue that has an abundant RNA in it, even if it's mRNA, we can also design a uh, antisense mRNA um, depletion pool for you as well. And now in the next three slides, I will show you data from uh, first our pan prokaryote rebel pool, then our pan plant rebel pool, and the uh, pan mammal rebel pool. So first, let's look at the pan prokaryote rebel pool. As I said before, the pan prokaryote rebel pool um, is a, composed of the pan bacteria rebel pool and the pan archaea rebel pool. And as you can see, the pan bacteria, for example, covers all proteobacteria gram positives. And here's some gram negative um, um, species also covered by it. And um, this enables uh, this enables ribosomal RNA depletion for um, groups. Like if you have a group, like a sample with many, many different uh, bacterial or archaeal species, you can just use the pan prokaryote for it and you can evenly deplete the ribosomal RNA um, from it. And obviously, the, all of the cytoplasmic uh, ribosomal RNAs are covered by the pan prokaryote. And here's some in-house data from our lab uh, that I wanted to show you. We use one microgram of Escherichia coli RNA, which was high quality RNA uh, with a RIN value around eight. Uh, RIN stands for RNA integrity number. And uh, we use the pan prokaryote rubber pool. So these um, leftmost two bars represent the transcriptome, what it looks like without doing any ribosomal RNA depletion. And as you can see, only 10% of the reads map to non ribosomal RNAs. So, like I said before, around 90% of the reads are usually ribosomal RNAs. And if you use the pan prokaryote rubber pools on it, you will see that only around 3% of the reads uh, actually map to ribosomal RNA. So the remaining 97% you can just use for your data analysis, which is really, really great. And here I also wanted to show you some data from a customer of ours, uh, Brooke Tomlinson. She's a PhD candidate at the University of South Florida. And she used the pan prokaryote rubber pool on Escherichia coli, Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Um, RNA and also um, Baumi and S. aureus RNA. And what you can see is basically all of them um, show that at least 90% of the reads did not map to ribosomal RNAs, meaning that you could use 90% and 90 or more of the reads for your data analysis. And here's um, the pan plant and what it covers. So obviously it covers all eudicots and monocots, uh, which are which cover, for example, Arabidopsis thaliana, the most studied plant, I would think, um, but also other species um, that are flowering plants. And uh, you can use it for leaf, seed, and root tissue because it just it covers uh, obviously the cytoplasmic ribosomal RNA, but also mitochondrial RNA and plastid RNA. So um, you won't lose any reads to any of these uh, ribosomal RNAs. And we have uh, a great collaborator from the Max Planck Institute, from the Max Planck Genome Center Cologne, um, Bruno Hütte and Christian Wöhle. 
and they tested the pan plant rubber pool on different species. And what they did is they also used one microgram of total RNA, of high quality RNA, and used the pan plant rubber pool on them. Obviously, they tried, the, they used um, a little bit of the Taliana RNA and tested the pan plant on it. And as you can see, only 6.4% of the weeds mapped to ribosomal RNAs. Um, but they didn't just test it on this Brasicacea, but also on some Rosacea or Lusacea and even Fabacea. And as you can see, always below 9% of the reads mapped to ribosomal RNAs. And this case down here was quite surprising. They just wanted to see how well the pan plant that was designed for flowering plants would work on Chlamydomonas reinhardi. Chlamydomonas reinhardi is a very primitive algae um, that is really distantly related to these flowering plants that the pan plant was designed for. And even there, um, the pan plant was able to remove the ribosomal RNA, so only 19% of reads mapped to uh, RNA um, after using the pan plant for RNA depletion. So that's really great. And just uh, for your information, we also created now a Chlamydomonas reinhardi rubber pool that you can just combine with a pan plant to enable also much better um, ribosomal RNA depletion results uh, when using uh, the pan plant on Chlamydomonas um, reinhardi. And here, as promised, uh, I will also show you uh, some data from the pan mammal rubber pool. And the pan mammal, as I said before, it covers, um, for example, cat ribosomal RNA, human ribosomal RNA, uh, rat ribosomal RNA, or also cow ribosomal RNA, and many, many other species. Um, mammalian species. Um, and it can be used on tissue or cell culture derived RNA and it targets the cytoplasmic RNA, the 28S, 18S, 5.8S and 5S RNA and also the mitochondrial ribosomal RNAs. And here is some data that we did in-house. Let's first focus here on the left hand side. So we used one microgram of uh, mouse RNA, of high quality mouse RNA and before depletion um, only 8% of the reads were non-rRNA. And after using the pan mammal rubber pool, you could use uh, or you can use the, the 97% uh, of the reads for your subsequent data analysis. So only below 3% of the reads mapped to ribosomal RNA. So the de de depletion efficiency was really great. And the same thing goes for human RNA. Here was the depletion efficiency a slightly bit better even. Um, as you can see, uh, below 2% of the reads mapped to ribosomal RNAs after depleting the RNA with a pan mammal rubber pool. And just out of curiosity, we wanted to see how well the pan mammal would work on degraded, like strongly degraded RNA. Here uh, we degraded it to a RNA integrity number of two or three. Um, and as you can see, 10% of the reads, so um, mapped to non-rRNA, and then after using the pan mammal, 70% of the reads were usable for subsequent data analysis. However, this was not good enough for us, and we decided to create a tool, as I mentioned before, for degraded RNAs. And um, here, the depletion efficiency was increased to 87% of the reads uh, not mapping to ribosomal RNAs. Here I wanted to give you a short summary of the rubber pools. As I said before, all our tools are complex pool uh, of optimally designed oligos, and this is how we ensure the specificity and efficiency uh, of our tools. And as I mentioned, the rubber pools can be can be designed to any species or to any abundant RNA that you want to deplete prior to RNA sequencing. And since we remove the ribosomal RNAs, you can detect everything else, like mRNAs, other non-coding RNAs, um, like non, uh, long non-coding RNAs or microRNAs, sRNAs, pyRNAs, all these non-coding RNAs. And since we also offer the pan rebel pools, you can do metatranscriptomics. And since we also um, offer the combination rebel pools, you can also use the rebel pools on mixed samples. And our Input range is quite broad. We tested the rubber pools, or our customers also tested the rubber pools on RNAs between 10 nanogram to 3 microgram. Um, 
So the input range is quite broad. And as I mentioned uh, before, or showed you before, the workflow is um, really easy, it's fast, and it's automatable. Um, and the rubber pools are priced competitively and are HPLC purified um, to have it purified as best as possible. And uh, what I also wanted to show you here, some of our uh, customers already have uh, published uh, using the rebel pools uh, in, for example, here, Nature Communications, BMC Genomics, or Nature Protocols. And yes, the rebel pools come in a kit. Um, we have a uh, kit available in as a six reaction trial kit, which you can purchase as first time purchaser. And also we have a 12 reaction, 24 reaction and 96 reaction uh, kit sizes. And rebel pools are shipped at room temperature and the rebel pool kit includes all reagents that are necessary for ribosomal RNA depletion. So all the buffers, the beads, the ethanol cleanup reagents are included in the kit. But we also offer the rebel pools as probes alone, and you can also purchase the beads of, uh, outside of the kit. And now let's look at the rap pools. The rap pools are used for RNA capture, um, and they're also biotinylated DNA oligos. And they're used by our customers to um, study RNA properties um, and to identify RNA uh, modifications. For example, uh, one of our customers has used the rapples to study uh, if there's any modifications on the SARS-CoV-2 RNA, for example, like acetylations or, or ethylations um, on the RNA itself. But also the rapples can be used to identify and characterize RNA interacting partners. And that's how it works. If you wanted to understand, if you want to find uh, any proteins or nucleic acids that are interacting with your targeted RNA, um, so before you include the rap pool into your sample, you crosslink um, the RNA to the proteins and to nucleic acids in vivo. Uh, after cell lysis, um, you include the rap pools, and the rap pools, as they are antisense to the RNA of interest, they hybridize to it. And um, here you also use uh, streptavidin coated magnetic beads as the biotin binds to streptavidin. And then you can elute either the proteins or the nucleic acids to sub subsequently study them and identify uh, new characters or maybe um, also a interactome of the studied RNA. And one of our customers also have already uh, used it um, and they published in scientific reports. Now let's uh, look into our siRNA pools, um, short SI pools. Um, and here I wanted to show you, I think really great data that represents how well the pooling approach actually re reduces the off-target effect when doing RNAi. So let's first focus on the left-hand side. Here a single siRNA for skill one, which is a human gene, was used at three nanomolar in HeLa cells and whole transcriptomic profiling was done. And here the green dot represents the target gene that is that was supposed to be targeted by the single RNA and the knockdown is, is quite efficient. However, all of these dark red dots represent all one transcript that was affected by the knockdown that was not supposed to be affected. Um, and it was three nanomolar, so it, it's not a high concentration that was used in this screen. However, um, this single RNA was quite potent in, in terms of uh, creating a off-targeted pattern. Is there a question? No, okay, sorry. Okay, so um, what we wanted to see, can we reduce this off-target effect uh, by using this, this as RNA that was used here on the left-hand side inside a cycle with 29 other as RNAs. And as you can see here, the same, the same setup was used. A SI pool against skill one in hello cells at three nanomolar was used and whole transcriptome profiling was done. As you can see, the knockdown was efficient. However, the off-target effect was reduced to a bare minimum. And um, Yes, this, the take home message of, of this data is that the pooling approach that we use for all our uh, products 
reduces any unspecific off-target effects. And you can read about it in this publication by um, Michael Hannes, the founder of Cytools Biotech um, in nucleic acids. And here uh, I wanted to show you um, how well the cytools actually work on even lower nanomolar concentrations and how um, reliable and reproducible the knockdown itself is. So let's first focus on the left hand side. Here uh, we tested uh, 708 cypools at one nanomolar and 204 cypools at 250 picomolar, so 0 0.25 nanomolar. And on, on, on the axis here you can see the percent remaining mRNA and um, we used uh, QPCR to uh, measure the remaining mRNA levels. And as you can see, at one nanomolar, from 708 cypools, more than 90% of the cypools resulted in a knockdown uh, below 20%. And even at 250 picomolar, um, the cypools were able to knock down the genes um, below 30%, so below 30% of the mRNA levels were uh, yeah, below 30%, um, the RNA was uh, in there in, in the cells um, after the knockdown using cycles. So that the take home message from this is you can use the cycles at really low uh, nanomolar concentrations and still they result in high uh, knockdown efficiencies. And here on the right hand side, uh, we wanted to show you how reproducible the knockdown actually is uh, when using cycles. So we use uh, we checked for uh, nine, uh, 96 um, um, genes um, at one nanomolar in different cell lines. Also, again, uh, we measured by qPCR the remaining mRNA levels, and as you can see, 76% of the um, of the knockdowns that we we uh, investigated were uh, basically the same. So that's the take home message here from these two data sets: is the low concentrations result in, in a very efficient and potent knockdown. And also you can rely on the knockdown that you uh, make using the site pools. So you don't need to validate uh, with other uh, sRNAs or other site pools uh, your data. Um, and here I also wanted to show you with a uh, case study from a customer of ours, uh, which, is, which was done by Michaela Bauer from the Gunther Meister Lab in Regensburg. And here on the left hand side, you can see that she uh, used um, cypools against those three genes here um, at one nanomolar. And she checked the knockdown after 48 hours and 72 hours by qPCR and normalized um, by GAPDH, a housekeeping gene. And the gray bars are our negative control um, that you can uh, just yeah, get when uh, using the cypools. So as you can see, the knockdown was potent for each of the of for each of the um, genes, and she wanted to also Michaela Bauer also wanted to check if she could get the same uh, knockdown efficiencies when doing a co depletion a co uh, knockdown of all three genes at the same time. And this is what you see here: the data. She used one nanomolar of the uh, of the pool of the three um, cycles, uh, three nanomolar and 10 nanomolar. And as you can see, 10 nanomolar is actually not the optimal concentration, uh, which also goes with our um, philosophy of using lower concentrations that are optimal for a perfect knockdown. Um, so the take home message here is you can use the cycles not just to, to knock down a single gene, but also uh, up to three genes um, at even one nanomolar concentrations. And here I wanted to also show you that we also offer um, side pools for, for example, ACE2 and Team PRSS2, which are two uh, human um, genes that um, are necessary or the proteins are necessary for SARS CoV 2 infection. Um, and you can um, for example, study the um, mechanism of infection using using the cycles. And as you've seen before, you can also co uh, knock down uh, both of these. Um, and yeah. 
So thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them now or write them into the chat and we can uh, answer them. Um, and also you can always contact us at um, info at .de, or you can also always contact our um, colleagues from Eastport for questions or orders. And yeah, we're also on Twitter and LinkedIn, so follow us there. And yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for, for your presentation. It was great. Uh, I think that some question maybe will come later. Uh, let me, for this purpose, also uh, introduce uh, our, my colleague uh, Wojtek Ledvina and uh, his right uh, contact uh, for you if you have any, any question regarding SE Tools uh, products. So, do you want to say something, Wojta? Yeah, I'd just like to introduce myself. Hello, my name is Wojtek Ledvina, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to write an email to us and we will come back to you as fast as we can. So you're welcome to ask any questions. OK, thank you. Uh, just kind reminder, uh, I sent uh, via chat a link to our questionnaire. Uh, I forgot to mention that each of you, uh, as a thank, will got a unique, uh, unique uh, promo code uh, for ordering SC tools with uh, SC tools products with 10% uh, discount. So uh, we will also inform you when uh, presentations and recording will be available to download uh, on our web page. So thank you for attention and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye.